Welcoming organization. Hello, everyone. Do you hear me? We hear you. you. Oh, nice to connect with you. <laughs> you are facilitating our uh, journey around the world, celebrating, you know, in our closing plenary, a loving world. Johanna, thank you for this introduction and thank you to the Spirit of Humanity Forum for these three extraordinary three days. We are coming together here towards co-creating a loving world. It's World Environment Day and we are coming together as the human family, as you see it also in our background as a human family. Yes, and, and it's so wonderful to see you all there. I mean, connecting the world, connecting the continents, and you look beautiful. <laughs> you look beautiful from wherever you are. It's so nice to connect. We here in Iceland and you here from all over the world. And I know that we will end the day in South Africa from the Northern Hemisphere to the Southern. So we look so much forward to just going on this ride with you. So I give it to you, Rama and Alexander. Thank you. And Johanna and the forum, you have taken us already on a beautiful ride. So this session is really where we all together come one final time together to take the ride together. And we wanted, because today is World Environment Day, we wanted to begin with letting the earth have a voice. So we will begin and we invite everyone to join us. You see here on the screen, all the continents of the world united. And we are just gonna start with a blessing. We will hear for just a minute from each continent, a blessing from our beloved speakers, loving transformative leaders in their own language and tradition translated briefly into English. And then we will invite every one of you to make your blessing on World Environment Day for humanity, for all life, for the earth. Let us start here in Home for Humanity where we light two candles and sing a song in Sanskrit. Loka samasta sokinu pavantu Loka samasta sokinu pavantu Loka samasta sokinu pavantu Om shanti shanti Shanti. Que tout être dans l'univers connaisse le bien-être. Möge alles Leben in Wohlbefinden miteinander blühen. May all beings in the universe be happy. May all beings in the universe be happy. May all beings in the universe experience well-being, may they be loved, and may they give their love. Haifa. You're muted. Thank you, thank you for um, such an inspiring introduction. Beautiful, I'm so touched. Uh, my blessings are Namatul Ardi, Namatul Kauni, he a Namatul Insan. Alaina and Nahmiha, when you half the Alaiha, Bil Mahabati, well Mahabati, well Mahabati, well Mahabati. Let me translate to English. A human, a human being's blessings is equal to the earth blessings, as, as it is equal to the universe blessings. The only way to protect our blessings, human beings, earth, universe, is through first love, 
love, love, lots of love and lots of loving. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening. I like to recite a Buddhist verse. Sabbe Satta Bhavantu Sukitatta. May all beings be joyful and secure. May they be happy within themselves. Whatever living beings they are be without exception, movable or immovable, long or huge, medium or small, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, dwelling far or near, born or coming to birth, may all beings be happy within themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Dear Reverend Anselm Adodo. Thank you. I will say a prayer in Yoruba, a prayer which I grew up with, the Lord's Prayer, a very special prayer for me. Babawa Timbeloru, Kabo Furuko Re, Kijoba Rede, Ifet Reni Kashilaye, Wotin Shendoru, Fua Lunje Ujoa Luni, Dareshe Wajua, Beatin Darija on Toshewa, Mako Atini Dowu, Shubongba Wa Kuro Dinuewu, the last word. Deliver us from all evil, evil from our hearts and from outside us, which I think is our greatest need today to be delivered from the evil that lies hidden within our hearts. May God grant our prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Thais and Katie, please. Yes, I, I'm going. I mean, I, I, the 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 you know the 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 Our Lady of Brazil is 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 black. You know, it's called the Nossa Senhora da Aparecida, and she has a prayer that says, and that we 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 and my family have used it to say it every morning. It said, neste dia que amanhece, quero pedir-te a paz, a sabedoria, a força. Quero ver os o mundo com os olhos cheios de amor, ser paciente e compreensiva, mansa e prudente, e assim não ver senão o bem, ver teus filhos como tu mesmos os vês, e assim não ver senão o bem em cada um. Guardo meu ouvido de toda a maldade... Guarda a minha boca de toda calúnia, que só de bênção se encha o meu espírito. Que eu seja tão bondosa e alegre, que todos que se chegarem a mim sintam a tua presença. Reveste-me de tua beleza, ó oh mãe, e que no dia de hoje eu te revele a todos. Uhum. The session... But Katie will continue in your place representing Sinal from the Americas. And it was beautiful to hear all your voices, your traditions, your blessings for humanity and the earth. And with this, we call to all the participants online, wherever you are in the world, if you would just on your Slido screen, please write your blessing on this World Environment Day for humanity and the earth. And we take a minute of silence to just integrate what we've heard.
as we travel the world, we acknowledge that we are standing on a solid foundation. Over the last three years, uh, three days, <laughs> it feels like years so intense was it, the last three days we have been seeing a build up of energy. We have seen that the spirit of humanity has been activated, wisdom has been exchanged, friendships have been built, and the commitment to build the future together has been strengthened. The forum and the forum strengths is really to activate, to evoke the spirit of humanity, of our collective inner and outer humanity. It is addressing, activating the highest possibility, our deepest humaneness, our fullest humanity. Let us listen to a couple of voices. Yes, we were opened by Johanna evoking the themes of the conference and Prime Minister Katrin Jakub's daughter of Iceland described Iceland's commitment to an economy of well-being and the priorities of the citizens beginning with mental health. The mayor of Reykjavik, Dagur Egertsen, underlined that governance for well-being requires participation of every single being. Um, the youth came in to educate us on well-being. Ella, a school student said, well-being is feeling loved and knowing you have the capacity to love. Karam from Lebanon, a 16 year old educated us that well-being comes from the heart and the mind because he said in the end, the world is a reflection of what you are. We heard so much about leadership and love. Sister Jayanti spoke of the transformative power of silent retreats to build leadership and trust. Peggy Dulaney spoke of the importance of vulnerability to show true st strength. And just today, Anne Baring a few minutes ago reminded us we are all connected to each other and to the cosmos and that love is the most essential nature of our being. And so over the past three days, the pearls per of humanity dropped into uh, our ever opening hearts. And we listened into themes like well being, humaneness, trust, authenticity, vulnerability moving from fragmentation to integration, participation, and again, and again, love. With this? With this, we open our panel, because this final plenary is an invitation to bring all our journeys together into one collective space. Let us distill and revisit one final time the theme of this forum, leadership and governance for well-being towards a loving world, towards a loving world, towards a loving world. The panel is for all of you and we invite all of you to actively participate. Yes, by now most of you would have heard from our organizers about Slido, slido.com and you type in SOHF so that while we are listening to our transformative leaders from every continent, you can share how this lands in you, how this resonates with your own loving leadership and your own contribution to building a loving world. So the panelists that you are going to meet, each one of them has gone through a profound personal transformation journey, arriving at a state of loving leadership. Each of their organizations is pursuing an integral approach to governance. A systemic, a whole systems approach, as Martin Frick and Otar Proper and others were speaking about today. They are showing us how it is possible to have a whole systems, whole life approach. And at the same time, what we've seen and what we are going to see in this panel, how each organization has the well-being of society, if not of the world in mind. And, at this, and in addition, a beautiful um, 
flavor that you are going to capture today is a rich cultural diversity of our humanity that these leaders that you are meeting now are representing. For each one draws on the cultural wealth and the, the indigenous wisdom and values of their own society. And this is also what brings us to work together as a home for humanity, Earth Alliance, towards the shared goal of co-creating home on Earth a just, inclusive, and regenerative Earth civilization. So as all of us take the energy of the Spirit of Humanity Forum back to our homes, back to the crises that each of our societies and organizations are facing during this pandemic, this economic health, climate, and governance crisis, let us be inspired and continue to learn with and for each other and support each other. And with this, we turn over to Brazil, Oops. Okay, first we turn to Alexander. <laughs> because Alexander wants to evoke once more three of the guiding themes that take us through the entire forum, which is silence, which is listening, and dialogue. And in this spirit, I offer a poem written today to the home, um, to the spirit of humanity community. When Silence reigns supreme. Listening lures love into the lush light of a luminous day. And our dialogue dials us directly into the domain of the divine. Thank you. So with this, we open our panel and turn back to Brazil in South America, to Thais and uh, Katie Weintraub, representing Southern and North America. You're still muted, Thais? Yeah. Thais, you're muted. Yeah, I can speak now. I'm going just to do the first uh, minute of introduction. Today is, is the, is the World Environmental Day is also the, the launch of the UN Decade on Restoration of Ecosystem Restoration. And, uh, and the Sinaldo Valley, which uh, Kate will talk about, is, a, is, is like one of these, these geo points in which we are doing these experiments of restoration, restoration of uh, regeneration of, of communities, of, uh, of ecosystems. I'm, I'm going to go into another panel, but uh, what I want to say just as an introduction is that I feel very connected with the spirit of, uh, of, of, of this, this event, you know, is leadership in a human way in which we can translate in every aspect of what we do for the planet, for our beings like uh, animals, people, the best, uh, our, 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 our best, the best version of we can be. And we have an opportunity right now as the world is going in this transition. No? And I think that uh, what, uh, what uh, maybe Katie will take over and, and talk about Sinal, but I think it's so important for us on an everyday basis to exercise. What does it mean to live uh, humanely and also in love? because we have to learn it, you know, and we have to relearn it. We know it, but we have to be exposed so we can express it. And with that, I leave you and send you a, a big, big hug and blessings for the, for the rest of this meeting and for you, Ram and Alexander and organizers uh, that have uh, put so much uh, effort and love uh, in doing such a, a, a beautiful event. Bye-bye. So I will take it from there. My name is Katie, and I'm very privileged and honored to represent Sinaldo Valley, um, which is located here in Rio de Janeiro in the Atlantic Forest um, of Brazil. I'm from the United States, from North America, and I, but I left my home in the United States after college six years ago to come to Sinaldo Valley with the idea of just spending a few months here um, to learn about food systems and, and um, restoration here in Brazil. And I end up falling in love with 
with the country, with the culture, with the people, and of course the project here at St. Aldovali, and here I am six years later. Um, and I think I'm so honored to be able to be part of this event today because when I came here, I was all, I was looking for something different. I had graduated from college. I was looking for something. I felt that the way that we solve problems in the world, we were always just solving the symptoms and not solving the root, but I didn't know what that root was. And so when I came to Sinal the Valley and I met Thais and I learned about this whole perspective of human leadership, of, of, the, of putting humanity at the core of leadership, um, I started realizing that the whole part that was forgotten was the human part, that we can have all the technical solutions in the world, but if we don't have the, the personal development and the personal evolution at the center of our leadership, then we cannot go forward. So at my time here at Sinal, um, which is now a flourishing center for regeneration, I've been here for six years now and we are now restoring 30 hectares of land of degraded forest. Um, we have various prototypes with um, many food foods and, and permaculture gardens and working with a local community. And we're a center for education where we receive young people and from all around the world. More than 4,000 people have come to Sinal the Valley, people like myself, some who stay for a day, some who stay for six years like myself. Um, but what I've learned most has been how love must be at the center and how it is very difficult in our modern society to live by our values every single day, whether that's sustainability or love. And so we need places like Sinal to be able to live our values, to do our best every day. And so um, I'm honored to be part of this event and I look forward to hearing from everyone else and participating in, in, in the rest of the, the, the meeting today. Thank you so much, Katie. And we are taking collectively just a minute to reflect, to integrate what we learned from the Americas. There's a deep breath. We jump from the Americas all the way to Asia, where we meet Dr. Vinya Ariyaratna, the president of the Savodaya movement in Sri Lanka. Thank you, Alexander. And uh, thank you, Rama. Thank you for inviting me. I'm deeply honored to be participating at this uh, Spirit Top Humanity Forum 2021 on this World Environmental Day. As I speak to you today, we are faced with two major environmental disasters in Sri Lanka. A ship carrying a large stock of hazardous chemicals and other material has caught fire in the Western Ocean of Sri Lanka. It is still burning and now the marine life and a stretch of 417 kilometers of coastal belt is polluted to an alarming level. The disaster is still unfolding and the level of environmental damage is predicted to be unprecedented in the entire history of our country. Secondly, the last few days, we have been facing torrential rain, causing massive floods and landslides, destroying lives and livelihoods in several districts of Sri Lanka. All these are happening while we are uh, in an exponential increase in COVID-19 cases and deaths. We are in lockdown as I speak to you now for the last three weeks causing severe hardships to low-income communities. I am speaking to you while leading a massive emergency humanitarian response to alleviate the suffering caused by these multiple disasters. Though manifested as, a nat as natural disasters or biological disaster disasters such as pandemics, we all know that their causality and impact are determined by human action. The kind of development model that we follow, which is based primarily on maximizing profit with little or no regard to human values or natural ecosystems is at the root of this crisis. COVID-19 is teaching us this lesson in the most blatant manner. The Sarvode Shramadana movement of Sri Lanka, which I represent, has tried to evolve an alternative social and economic order which is based on satisfying basic human needs through a very holistic approach wherein both spiritual and physical development go hand in hand. 
For over six decades, based on Buddhist teachings, the Sarvodhi movement has reached over 15,000 communities in Sri Lanka who belong to different diverse ethnic, religious, and cultural traditions who are thriving to be self-sustaining and self-governing. In a country which has been devastated by an internal armed conflict for nearly three decades, we have been also in the forefront of peace and reconciliation. We practice principles of loving kindness or metta, which we try to transform into compassionate action or karuna. Then we experience the joy of positive results of our action, which we call mudita, which leads us to practice equanimity or upeka. This inner transformation within ourselves is fundamentally important to us as leaders who are dedicated towards creating an outer transformation in our societies. If we are to overcome the unprecedented challenges that we face in our world today, we need to create a world where we share and care for each other, sharing our love, our intellect, our experience in a spirit of global solidarity is the need of the hour. The Home for Humanity Earth Alliance brings diverse organizations from around the world to create, to co-create a loving home on earth for all life. Let's create outer peace through creating inner peace within ourselves. I like to end with the Buddhist verse, Sabbe Satta Suki Hontu, may all living beings be well and happy. Thank you. Let us just take a moment of silence to absorb these deep words from Sri Lanka, from Dr. Vinaya Aryaratna. And Vinya, we thank you yet again that in the midst of this triple emergency, you made time to be mm. here with us and bring the spirit of Karuna into our midst um, in such a powerful way. And now we turn, we travel yet again, and we go to Jordan, the heart of the Middle East, to Haifa mm. Najjar, a senator in the parliament and a leading educator for enlightenment in her society. Thank you, Rama. Thank you, Alexandra. Uh, wh while I was listening to everybody, I was trying, I, I forgot all about my papers, by the way. I put it aside and I decided to start by saying that we cannot isolate beauty from our inner part of beauty. We cannot isolate love from our daily life and we cannot isolate love from the universe um, and from the people who know. We know, we love. So Rama and, uh, and Alexander, uh, uh, I love you. Jordan loves you. The Middle East loves you. Uh, our humanity is thankful to you. And there is a, a nice poet, I, I love it. Uh, it's written by Mzar Qabbani. Uh, he says in it, لو خرج المارد من قمقمه وقال لي لبيك دقيقة واحدة لديك تختار فيها ما تريد من الياقوت والزمرد لاخترت عينيك بلا تردد. This uh, beautiful piece of Arabic poetry is about uh, it's about uh, uh, power, huge power that would ask a person. Uh, to choose whatever he or she wants of the world. Money, uh, jewelry, things, and uh, uh, the choice was love. 
that I will choose your eyes. I will choose friendship. And going back to the poetry, whatever offered to me at this particular moment, I would choose to be at this particular time with you all. And I would choose your beautiful eyes, Rama and Alexander. So thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you to, for, for uh, thank you for your friendship. Thank you for all what you are. Uh, I will go, I, uh, I can't, as, as you both know, I can't at these uh, sessions and dialogues, but recall my mother. My mother, I keep, while, while I was listening to you, I kept recalling my mother's kitchen in our house in Zerka. As you know, I'm, I, I, maybe, maybe Alexander knows, I don't know if you don't know, uh, my mom, was born in a village called Arama in Palestine. And she was raised in Akka by the sea. Uh, however, she lived all her life in Zerka, in the heart of the desert of Jordan. So while we are in Zerka, sitting at the table of our kitchen, I used to smell the olive trees of our village. We would close our eyes and we would imagine and uh, smell the olive trees. And my mother you always felt that she is rooted in Rama, uh, lived in Akka by the sea. Uh, she felt that she owns the world, that she is the daughter of the whole world. But, but when she moved to Jordan, she, she got in, in so much engaged in Jordan, in love with Jordan, where she said, uh, we cannot separate the sea from the desert, the mountain, from the valley. And we cannot separate our life from nature. And she used to tell us, nature is a major source of uh, knowledge, is a major source of relation. And she believed that life is about relations. And uh, she kept telling us, wherever you go, uh, just remember, you could be surrounded by people who talk about good food, about meat, about, but if you don't have a table in your kitchen, surrounded by people that you love, you care about, you uh, communicate passionately with them, you, sh you truly share your inner part of the self with them and enjoy uh, a small piece of bread with olive, and zatar. Zatar is, is, a, is an old, is a, old kind of uh, spices, Jordanian, Palestinian, Middle Eastern spices. If you don't enjoy this, uh, nothing in the world will satisfy you. Uh, and uh, since then, I, I, I believe that uh, education, as you know, I'm an educator. Not a good, I'm, I'm in the process of trying to be a good educationist. There is a long uh, way for me to go. Uh, I truly believe that education is about relations, is about passion, is about love, is about, uh, it's, a, it's a journey towards the inner part of the self, the outer part, the nature. It's about reflection, it's about revisiting our own learning, it's about revisiting and unlearn our old learning, invite a new learning all the time. And through this, through this cycle, we will be able to invite a new mindsets, new paradigms. And I think nowadays, we, the world, if we want to protect our shared humanity, we cannot but invite new paradigms. And this only comes through reflection, compassion, relations, uh, be <laughs> through humility, through trying our best to get over anything that would jail us. Power jails us. Humanity frees us. It's, we, we cannot. Uh, accept things the way they are. We need to invite hope, love again, loving, sharing, uh, and and admit that uh, 
the old understanding of leadership, because sometimes we all talk about leadership. I, I, I get bored with the word leadership. What is leadership? It's, there is, there's a westernized understanding of leadership that I really, in my schools, my students, my colleagues, my friends at the school, I think that uh, we need to go beyond the, the, the academic understanding of leadership. Leadership is about giving, it's about generosity, it's about love, it's about sharing part of you, it's about telling your story, it's about my mother whom I lost years and years ago. It's about my grandchildren. It's about Shams and Kosai, the sunshine of my life. Where is Shams? She is the sun. She, the future is hers. It's not mine. I need to get over my own stories, share with her my stories, and give her the space to share her own story and try be a storyteller uh, through the old uh, school of education, I would uh, urge her to, uh, to tell my story. But what I have to do is turn the whole wheel around and ask her to learn from her own story. And uh, uh, I, I would like to end by saying that, uh, as you know, in our part of the world, we're very challenged, extremely challenged. However, as you all know, I believe that Jordan is in the heart of the world. Uh, Jordan is in the heart of the Arab world. Uh, and Jordan has always been about uh, moderation. Jordan has always been about uh, building bridges. Uh, uh, well, uh, in our school, we believe that uh, uh, you know, politicians build uh, walls, we build bridges. And Jordan is about building bridges. Uh, and we've been very challenged with what's going around us uh, in Gaza and in uh, Jerusalem. And we really, we really, we believe that nowadays we cannot but invite our humanity back. We need to urge all politicians, the old school of power, the old school of, of money making, of just inviting power rather than inviting the inner part of ourselves, and rather than inviting our humanity, our love, our sharing, our connection, our, our good qualities, just being humble, just being able. After the uh, COVID-19, we need to go back into our daily life and touch each other and hug each other and be able to connect again, connect uh, purely, connect without any agendas. We need to get over the politicians' agendas and bring to the table our humane agenda. And the world will never be able to stay to, be, to, to, to relieve the negative energy we are really jailed by unless we solve we understand, genuinely understand the Jordanian story, the Jordanians, the, the, the Hashemites, Hashemites uh, vision, their vision towards building bridges, towards inviting the world, towards inviting differences, diversity, and oneness, being united yet celebrating our diversity. And we cannot, we, we will always be pained my people in Jerusalem and in Gaza, in Palestine and in Israel are pained. So we need to free the pain of we, of all of us, and try to invite hope, love back, and lots of love and loving. Thank you so much. Aifa, thank you so much also for evoking a new paradigm. And we take in this spirit a moment of silence to connect to you, to the region from where you are coming, and to your wisdom. Thank you. And with that, we connect to our brother, who is a father, to Father Dr. Anselm Adodo, a pioneer from Africa, a pioneer in the field of, of healing, of integral healing, 
based and indigenous knowledge and indigenous knowledge creation based in Nigeria. Father Anselm, please. Thank you. Uh, Haifa said uh, we should be storytellers. I don't have any other way, no better way for me to say my two reflections, say by telling a short story uh, about a man who wanted to experience God and was determined to encounter God. And he was told God is somewhere there on the mountain, a very beautiful mountain. And he set out climbing the mountain of God. After three years of struggle on the journey, he arrived there at the mountain, beautiful mountain, surrounded with beautiful plantations, trees. But when he got there, he saw only one person there at the mountain. He saw an angel, and the angel said, but God is not here. God has gone back to meet you where you came from on earth. And the man was disappointed. The angel said, you can't find God here. Go back to your people. There you will find God. So he learned his lesson. He went back. For me, that is a powerful story that humanity were all busy going up there to the mountain of God, where God is, or whatever is our God, success, happiness, comfort, material, wealth, whatever it is. But we are reminded every time to come back home. That home is where we are, humanity. So that has been my experience. I came to, to this wonderful place where I am, in a Catholic monastery, where I came to find God, searching for God, and I learned that I can only find God by going to myself and to my fellow brothers and sisters. And that is why I'm excited to be a part of the Home for Humanity, where we remind ourselves that this earth is our home. For us to live happily here, we need to care for the earth. And from my experience, those who abuse other people, they also abuse nature. They have abused the gifts that nature has given to us. So this is our, our home. For me then, leadership is self-knowledge. I mean, a true leader does not need to show or to tell anybody that it's a true leader. It is so obvious. A true leader, a powerful leader is always one who has self-knowledge. And it shows when you see a leader who has attained to that knowledge of the self, because you will see humility, you will see love, you will see selflessness. And in my work over the past 25 years, I have uh, uh, discovered that today in the world, we need to revive the spirit of cooperation more than competition. But we are so busy. Uh, we want to be the first to break the news, the first to hear the news, the first in everything. Then nobody who is going to be the second then. So we need to reorient our educational system too, to let us know that at the end of the day, in, as we say in Africa, a rich man, one rich man in a village is a poor man because he is the only rich man in the village. But when he shares his wealth with everybody, he's a worthy man because he's free to move around and associate with everyone. He does not need to build high walls to protect himself out of fear. And I think that is the word you in human. You head here on earth. That is where we are. So I call on us, on humanity, to let us come together to revive this spirit of cooperation. That I do not need to suppress you in order to be happy. I do not need to push you down in order to climb up. Together, we can move up together, and then we'll all be happy together. Thank you.
Let us take Anselm's wisdom, stories, humility deep in our hearts. Let us contemplate this journey of the entire earth, the planets, these loving, humble, committed leaders of all colors, creeds, ages, genders. Let us reflect on our own leadership practice, our own governance systems, that has no our capacity for love and change. And building on all five continents and on the last words of Father Anselm of coming home to our humanity, this is what Home for Humanity and its Earth Alliance is about. Coming home also to the unity that is embedded in the word humanity. And that means on three levels, when we say home, we mean on the one hand, and all of us have spoken about this and we heard a lot in the last days about the inner home of who we are, about the outer home of our family home, organization or community and the earth home we are sharing. And in the spirit, do we have time to ask everyone if there's one last message because we will hand mm. back in one minute to Johanna and the organizers mm. to wrap up the conference, to ask each of you if you have one sentence, a message that you want to leave the Spirit of Humanity Forum and the world with. Just one line and we will end with you, Katie, because you are our future, the youngest one. So let's go first to Vinya. If there's... You're muted. Oh, you're still muted? Let's all work towards a better future for our children. Thank you. Haifa. Hope, love, and um, genuinely transform our educational system into uh, transform our schools into being a community center, into being a relational center, into being a dialogue center into being uh, well-being centers. We need to work on that. And I believe that the coming future is extremely hopeful. And it will be, it will be, we, we all will be, my grandchildren will be surrounded by love and passion and compassion and humility. Thank you, Hi first Shukran. Answer please. Yes, I will leave you with prayer that may what you are as a person not be an obstacle to your inner peace, to reconciliation with other people. So I pray for reconciliation between the world, humanity, between us and the environment, between the plants and the animals and the whole eco uh, ecological system that may we find peace and reconciliation. Thank you. Thank you, Anton. And the final word from our youngest voice, Katie. Um, as the American poet Amanda Gorman said last year, there is always light if we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Katie, thank you. This is a powerful final note. And we simply want to allude that once the final words have spoken also by the organizer and the final session that is now taking place, we will also have Pops Mohammed, who is a Home for Humanity artist, bring this light that, that all of you, Haifa and Anselm and Katie and Thais have shared uh, and Vinya with us in this session will bring this light into these beautiful musical voices together with many African voices. So we end with the cradle of humanity of Africa. Beautiful. Uh, we are just going to hand over, but I got a go ahead from Johanna to share a poem that I dedicate to the spirit of humanity and to all of the words of love 
and leadership that everyone has shared in this forum and that all five of you have embodied in this session. The song of change. That morning, the child awoke and pointed to the rising sun. Look, father. His father looked at how the horizon burst slowly into crimson flames. He heard the eager thrill of morning birds. He inhaled the fragrant innocence of dawn. He felt the loving palm of his child on his cheek as if for the first time. That day in the cabinet of ministers, he announced, stop the shelling, end the war. Let us repair the damage we have done. Like a ripple on still waters, the murmur of change spread. Other leaders rose in boardrooms and chambers of commerce. Stop the selling of our souls for profit. Let us sow the seeds of care. And others still, in assemblies and councils, stop this madness of division and plunder. Let us regenerate the earth and ourselves. At that, women stepped forward everywhere. Their feet strummed nature back to life, while their arms bore designs of the future they'd long awaited and lovingly planned. Now the youth leapt forward from every corner of the earth, glowing with planetary consciousness and love that transcends color, class, gender, and creed. Ella, Ariba, Karam, and all the rest sang out in delight. It's happened, it's happened at last. World leaders have opened their hearts. Now the real work can, can begin. And so it was, while children played, while birds, bugs, and beasts cheered with glad relief, we began to build a loving world of well-being for everyone, a true home for humanity in unity with all life. That, friends, is the power of love for which we thank the spirit of humanity. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you all so much for this beautiful panel, for your love. Thank you, Johanna. Thank you, spirit of humanity. And we turn back to you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much to all of you. It was an honor to share this moment with you and thank you so much for those beautiful visions from all over the world and those those yeah those sharings thank you so much it was a true honor to share this moment with you here today in this closing plenary of the fifth spirit of humanity forum yes we are really coming to a close now after three full rich day of exploring love and leadership and governance and well-being and we have here with us today uh, two of the Icelandic. Hi, I'm Ops Mohammed, and I am truly, truly so very inspired to be chosen as the artist for the closing of the Spirit Humanity Forum, and especially so after a year and a half of COVID. The key that you have chosen this year towards a world of governance leadership, well-being, and a loving world for the rest of the people around the world sit so close to my heart. Since 1994, I decided to take it upon myself to become a leader in my community and outside my community by taking my rock and guitar and putting it away and study indigenous instruments. And therefore today, I'll be performing the Chora, a theme, a healing song for you. So, what I've decided is that I've looked at the youth in the townships who had no access to instruments and things like that, who had no access to the international platform, and I tried to expose them. And even up to today, on most of my concerts, I include the youth. And I always teach them to remember the past in order to go into the future. 
So I'm also looking at the world in turmoil and conflict, countries in conflict around the world, that we should all pray for them and love them. And I believe that you cannot love someone else if you don't love yourself. It is my opportunity also to congratulate those leaders, indigenous leaders of indigenous instruments, people who have sacrificed their whole lives in actually promoting their indigenous culture, their food, and even dying languages. I praise them for what they've been doing. And I must say that uh, it is an honor for me that I will be playing the theme song for tonight's show, playing out. And I must say, I'm feeling very honored that I will be playing the healing song for you guys. So, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, there's so much that I want to tell you, but I know there will be another opportunity sometimes where I could be telling you more about this and more about what's happening around us and more about the cultures that we have in South Africa. We have the most amazing cultures. Like, for instance, I've been working with the Khoisan people they taught me all about their culture, the music, the food, and even some of their dying languages. That was my school. And I believe each and every one of you, leaders around the world of indigenous music, has also taught themselves in similar ways the way I have been. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, please accept my little offering of the peace song and may everything go well with you guys after the concert and I'm going to leave you in lots of love and peace. So I'm going to take my instrument. She's named Fatima, my Cora, which is named after my mom. So thank you so much once again for having me for the closing of this concert. Thank you so much. I'm sitting here in my studio and it's really nice. I've got incense burning. It's a shame that you can't smell the incense, but I hope that the music that I'll be playing to you will make you smell the incense. And this one is not only for you, but for the rest of the world. The Khoisan people, the Khosas, the Native American people, all the shamans and all the beautiful people around the world who are watching this concert tonight. The song is for you. It's a song for the world. It's a healing song for the world. Thank you so much. I hope I haven't been talking too much. So here we go. The healing song. This song has been specially chosen for this concert. journey into the mystical past where you shall find your future a future of love peace and understanding where we will give our love and respects to the unborn babies of tomorrow yes I'm talking about the Nelson Mandela's of the world, the Dalai Lama, Mahatma Gandhi, Steve Biko, Albertina Sisulu, Credo Motwa, Maya Angelou, Malcolm X, Mary of the Maroon, Martin Luther King. You see, they stand for what you and I could be. 
stretching before me like a galaxy of stars into entities of the unknown. For you will never know where you're going to unless you know where you're coming from. And this is your future. You are now a child of the 21st century. And I would love to welcome you to your own 21st century. A 21st century filled with love, peace, understanding, tranquility, and beautiful mystical experiences. But I also believe one day, when I die, I shall become a dream. I'd love to become your dream. A dream of the past, the present, and the future. Welcome to your own 21st century. One day when I die, I shall become a dream. I'd love to become your dream. A dream of the past, the present, and the future. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed playing to you. So I wish you well. Go home well. Be safe with your families. Love one another. Touch someone's hand or touch someone on, on his head or on his shoulder and just tell him that you love him. And don't forget, I love you too. Take it easy, guys. I'm Pops Mohammed, and I love you. Thank you.